This episode on Around the World on 8 Plates, we will feature a new country on this episode. And we will introduce famous tourist spots in this country. We're also going to teach you how to plan an itinerary for this country. And most importantly, we're going to teach you how to cook a signature dish from this country. And to get to know this country better, we're going to introduce a special guest. So which country are we visiting today? Well, we will find out after the punny monologue. So here's a punny monologue. So my friend went to the beach the other day and he realized that he had forgotten something. He said, oh man, I forgot all my things. He was like, oh man, I wish I had a bigger towel. So based on this, can you guess where we're going? If not, let me just welcome you or say marhaban bikum to Oman. And what dish are we cooking today? We're going to prepare lemon rice with Omani mashuai or grilled fish. Presented to you by National Taiwan Normal University Common Core Education Committee Foreign Language Education Division. So after landing in Muscat, Oman, do you know where to go? Do you know how to plan your trip? Well, worry not. Here is a suggested 4-day, 3-night itinerary for a wonderful trip to this beautiful country. From Muscat International Airport, there are three ways by which you can travel to the city. You can travel by bus, by taxi, or by car. Drop off your bag at the hotel and start day one of your itinerary. Day one should be relaxing, so just spend time in the capital city, Muscat. There are lots of things to see. First of all, make your way to Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque. Built in 1992, this is the biggest mosque in Oman. It was a brainchild of the former Sultan of Oman. Because of that, it was named after him. The mosque is divided into two parts. One is for tourists and one is for locals. Make sure you go to the side for tourists. Expect to spend two to three hours there because there are so many things to see. There's a minaret, beautiful fountains, intricate hallways and corridors, an audio guide in six languages, chandeliers here and there on ceilings, domed buildings, and other wonderful sights. Now let's take a moment to take a look at these other sites. After going around Sultan Kapus Grand Mosque, it's time to head to the Royal Opera House Muscat. It's around 11 minutes by car. Now, let's talk about first the outside or the exterior of the Royal Opera House. Well, you can see that it has many, many structures outside that make it so beautiful. As for the inside, there are many beautiful paintings and also carpets, pillars, a staircase that is out of this world, and an atrium that is a sight to behold. According to the guide, the Royal Opera House Muscat is a leading arts and culture organization in the Sultanate of Oman. And what's more is, not only does it showcase the art and culture of Oman, it's also aiming to find out how to incorporate the culture and the arts of other countries. Here is what he had to say. From Burma, okay. Yes. okay. We have uh, the marble here. Yes. It's Italian marble. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. The chandeliers around yes. the building. Yes. It's from uh, Austria. Oh, Austria. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have the ceiling up. Yes. The ceiling is inspired from our castle. We have castle. It's called Jebrin Castle. Okay. That castle is back to 17th century. Right. So His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, he inspired that uh, old decoration and he uh, copied it. Okay. 
Sir instrument it's a gift from his majesty sultan qabus to the royal opera house yeah the oldest instrument it's back to 400 years and wow. the newest one back to 200 years oh wow, wow. we have three sections this okay. is section number one yes and here also we have Wow. Wow. This both of them are from France, made in France. Mm-hmm. But mostly it looks like uh, Asian. Yeah, yeah. From China or uh, Iran yes. or uh, Japan. Yes. But uh, actually it's made in uh, France. Okay. Both of them. Both of them. Okay. Wow. So this is the last year, the last uh-huh. uh, musical instruments. Yes. Uh, we have uh, the smallest instrument, the violin. Wow! Uh, it's uh, the smallest instrument, and the violin of the house. Can you can you play that? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. All the, the instruments, it's real instruments. Okay. Yes. We have here different collection of flutes. Mm-hmm. I record that. Yes. And here also we have uh, Italian. So, can you tell me why it's divided into three sections? How are they divided? And just they without any reason. Okay, yes, they put it at, as a display and as a small museum. Now let's take a few seconds to really appreciate and admire the beauty of this opera house. Now what to do on the second day of your trip? First, make your way to Mutra Kurnish. It's around 15 to 16 minutes by car from the city center. Other than the beautiful view of the sea, there are mosques, a nice seafront boardwalk, places for a picnic, rest areas, a really cool fort, a traditional market, otherwise known as a souk, and places where you can see cruise ships next to a dhow. From Mutra Cornish, make your way to Al Sifa Beach. On your way, you'll see many things, such as cool government buildings, the National Museum of Oman, more mosques, and other wonderful sites. Now you have arrived at Al Sifa Beach. What to do there? First, just relax. It's one of the least crowded beaches I've been to. Let's take a look. One of the best things about coming to this country is there aren't a lot of tourists. I am on my way to the beach and so far I have seen one car parked and no one. No one in sight. So let's go to the beach and see if there will be a lot of people on the beach. All right, I'm excited to show you what the beach looks like. Other than my car, you can count how many other cars are there. Now let's take a moment to enjoy the beauty of this beach. After frolicking on the beach, it's time to find a nearby hotel and get some rest. Now let's start day three of your trip. In the morning, depart from Al Sifa Beach and make your way to Bima Sinkhole. Driving to Bima Sinkhole will take you about one hour. Along the way, you'll be surprised to see wild camels eating grass near the highway. Let's take a few seconds to admire these beautiful animals. And before you know it, you've arrived at Bima Sinkhole. What is Bima Sinkhole. Well, Bima Sinkhole is a water-filled depression located in the limestone of eastern Oman. Some people believe that it was created when a meteorite hit Earth. Other people think it was formed by a collapse of the surface layer due to dissolution of the underlying limestone. Now what can you do there? Well, first of all, you can try to be brave like me. You can also go swimming in the clear water. You have lots of dead skin? Well, just put your foot in the water and lots of fish will come eat your dead skin off. It's also a wonderful place to take selfies alone or with friends. Whatever activity you choose, just have a good time. Now it's time once again to hit the road and go to the next destination. From Bima Sinkhole, it's time to go to Wadi Shab. After driving one hour, you'll get to experience the beauty of Wadi Shab. 
When you arrive, you will have to take a boat across the river. After that, you'll have to hike for about 45 minutes. Then the fun begins. Swim in the clear water and look for the waterfall that is behind a cave. Now make your way back to Muscat. By the time you arrive, it will be dark. And that's the best time to visit or to simply pass by Al Amin Mosque. The lights are just beautiful. Now, what can you do on the last day of your trip in Oman? First, make your way to Al Zulfa Mosque. So, what is so special about this mosque? Well, this mosque, first of all, has a beautiful ceiling. More importantly, it is one of the more modern mosques in Muscat. It was built in 1992 and it can accommodate or up to 1500 people or 1500 people can go there to pray. It is very famous for the 20 green domes that you can find at the top of the mosque. Now, let's admire the beauty of the mosque for a few seconds. Now, what about the inside or the interior of the mosque? Well, look at the carpet, look at the walls, and you will see that the walls are designed using small tiles. Can you imagine how many tiles are used? Again, let's spend some time looking at the beauty of the inside of the mosque. After going to the mosque, it's time to head back to the hotel. If you have an early flight, go straight to the airport after that. However, if you have an evening or an afternoon flight, go to the rooftop of your hotel and admire the view of Amman near the swimming pool. After swimming, it's a good idea to take a shower, especially if you have an evening flight and you have to check out of the hotel at 12. One last thing, when you travel, sometimes you don't have enough time to go to all the places you want. So here's a list of some of the places that I really wanted to go, but I just didn't have time. Now that we have learned how to travel within Oman, let us quickly learn more about this beautiful country. Here's a postcard showing us the flag, some basic information, and location of Oman on a map. Finally, continue reading to find out why it has one of the longest reigning monarchs in the world. After that, we're going to teach you how to cook. Alright, so without further ado, here is more information about Oman. Before teaching you guys how to cook Omani Mashwai, let's go through the list of ingredients. You'll need some scallions, you'll need one teaspoon of ginger paste, the juice of one lemon, half a teaspoon black pepper, half a teaspoon ground turmeric, half a teaspoon ground cardamom, one teaspoon cumin, some butter, some oil, and finally two tablespoons of garlic. You will also need one cup cream, 2 cups rice, any kind of flat fish, around 300 to 500 grams, you'll need a broth cube, you'll need another lemon, some cilantro, and some salt. The turmeric is available at any supermarket. For the cardamom, just google the store that I'm showing on screen right now. Step 1 is to marinate the fish. First, use a grater to make the ginger paste. Now score the fish so that your fish will have more flavor later when you cook it. Now in a bowl, add around 2 tablespoons of oil, 2 tablespoons of garlic, and also the ginger paste. Then add the juice of 1 lemon, 
And now for the spices. First, you'll need around 1 teaspoon of cardamom. And then 1 teaspoon of cumin. Next, add some black pepper. Half a teaspoon to 1 teaspoon of turmeric. Some salt. Then mix. The fish has to marinate for 3 hours. Let's go to step 2. The next step is to use a grater to take out the lemon zest. Now for step 3, let's cook the rice. In a hot skillet, add some oil. And then add some butter. When the oil and the butter are hot enough, add the scallions. Just use the white part of the scallions. Now when the scallions are burned a little, add the garlic. Now add the zest of the lemon. Mix and cook until the vegetables are fragrant. When the vegetables are fragrant, add the rice. Remember, it's uncooked rice. Now it's time to add some salt, the turmeric, and mix or stir everything together. Next, add some black pepper, some water with a broth cube, and the cream. Mix everything together so it doesn't burn. And now add the juice of one lemon. Now cover the pan with a lid or a glass cover and cook until the rice is soft. Finally, let's grill the fish. On high heat, put the fish one by one into the grill pan. When one side is cooked, turn the fish to the other side. Now, serve the fish and the rice together and top with chopped scallions and cilantro or dill. This recipe serves two to three people, and there you have it, lemon rice with mashuai or Omani grilled fish. In case you need it, here is a written recipe for today's dish. Feel free to share in the comments how your lemon rice turned out. I know during this pandemic, it's difficult and dangerous to travel abroad. Fortunately, we can taste a bit of Oman right in the comfort of our own home. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe to get weekly video recipes. Anyway, enough talking, here is a written recipe. Well, it's time again to meet our special guest so that we can get a better understanding of what Oman is really like. So without further ado, here is our special guest for today. Mr. Muhammad Al Sami. I'm National Taiwan Normal University student and teachers. My name is Muhammad Al Sami. Uh, this is I'm from Oman. Uh, what's special about Oman? Oman is a, is the safest country in in the Gulf and in the Middle East, no, uh, originally. Uh huh. Uh, what's special about uh, Oman is like the the culture. Yep. It's the safe. Uh, cool people, safe, safe people. Right. Uh, like lovely people, friendly. Very. Also, yeah. Also the the nature here. Okay. You, you can see the mountains wherever you go. Yeah. Like you, you go into the highway. You yep. see the, the Yes. You see you see the mountains. Right. It's like really good for the eyes. Right. Also, we have like what you call it is wadi. Mm -hmm. Wadi is about like a hiking, but in in a different level. Okay. Where you can hike then swim then hike then go under the caves right and oh. you can see you can see like waterfalls inside the caves right it's like really really beautiful places here like we have many many wadis it's like up to up to like 20 20 wadis wow. you can do many hikes even uh -huh. in the mountains we have the highest mountain in in in, in the middle east yep it is called uh, uh jebel shams it's okay mountains uh son of the mountain okay okay yeah. nice also also we have Salala, which is uh, known for good weather. Right. Uh, it, it's like it comes green, it, it, it like convert to green. The whole land convert to green, uh -huh. and, and during from from June to August. So, it's, if it's not green, what color is it? It is like it normally comes with the brown color, which is Oman is normally known. Right. For, okay. But in, in during those two months, yeah. three months, it's it's completely green. Wow. Like where you can do like. Boating, where you can see like high mountains in, in the uh, beside the sea. Right. It's really beautiful. I highly really recommend to visit Oman. It's okay. a beautiful country, beautiful people. Yeah. And the best to my friend Joe. So, which country are we going to visit next? The answer will be revealed 
on the next episode on November 3rd, 2022, as we once again go around the world on eight plates. For today's TOEIC, you will be practicing reading. You're going to do part six. And for this part, you will read a passage of text, such as an article, a letter, a form, and an email. In each reading passage, there will be blanks to fill in. You will read four possible choices for each blank. You should read the entire passage to make sure you choose the correct choice in context. Here are the questions. Here is the answer key. If you need the answers and explanation, just send me an email. So which country are we going to visit next? The answer will be revealed on the next episode on November 3rd, 2022, as we once again go around the world on eight plates. <laughs>